The Lunar Guardsman Written by Krimar Chapter 3 Be Still, My Heart, Part 2 Rarity was a mare of dignity, so she only squealed eternally. Rarity did not like what she was hearing so far. She expected Princess Celestia of all ponies to have more sense than that. Admittedly, she didn't know anything about the Rigdon's character, his nuances and quirks, but the savage picture that Twilight and Spike had painted made her think that, that this day had a good chance of ending in disaster. Twilight also hadn't taken the news that Celestia had not so much as hinted to Twilight's former bodyguard about their arrival. She was trying to control her shivers and to ease her nerves with massive consumption of Celestia's excellent tea. Having drained a teapot of her own so far, Rarity admired her bladder control at least. Princess Celestia had glued herself to her student's side, one of her large pristine wings caressing Twilight's back. Rarity held Spike close to her. The baby dragon also doubting the outcome of the incoming meeting, his little claws clicking against each other, producing a small spark on random intervals. Celestia spoke softly, taking care to keep Twilight calm with her tone, at least. I have very valid reasons to withhold notifying him, Twilight. If you don't mind telling us, Princess, said Applejack, eyes locked on a Twilight shaking cup. What would those reasons be? Seems like a foolish thing to do, considering who we talk about. Rarity noticed that Applejack wisely didn't specify if she referred to Rigdon or Twilight. The white alicorn took Applejack's animation in stride. It is a little complicated. For one, if I did let him know you were coming, he would have ran off to hide. Twilight's head bobbed up with a gasp. <laughs> but you, but your letter, you wrote that he wants us back. Twilight looked betrayed by this revelation. The white wing tightened around Twilight. I did, but the big difference between what he wants and what he thinks you two need. Celestia had completely lost her usual serene look and had an expression of complete exasperation. I wrote to you that he really wants the two of you back in his life. What he thinks, however, is that you are better off without him upsetting your personal lives. Especially since he learned how well you were adjusting to life in Ponyville. And yes, Twilight, he has been reading the reports you have sent me. She smiled. He is very sneaky, but he got too certain of himself one night and I caught him in an act of creeping in my chambers at night to read them. The solar guard is pretty much after his head after that, especially since they have no idea how he does it. That alone should tell you how much he is starving for even the slightest way to reconnect with you, my dear student. That bonehead is too much of a... Celestia uttered a sharp, harsh word that Rarity failed to understand. To admit it. Spike snorted with a mirth at Rarity's side. <laughs> That's one of his words. The bad ones. I know. Celestia grinned. He explained what it means to me once, and it fits him to a T. Twilight choked a laugh, put her cup down, and turned her head towards Celestia's face. This I can see him doing. She hesitated a bit before continuing. What? Other reasons are there. Celestia sighed. Rigdon's been unhappy with some of my choices lately. His trust in me has waned a bit, and I didn't want to give him more reasons to distance himself. Rarity liked the direction this day was heading towards less and less. The princess rose up on her long legs. I think we should delay this no more, she said, giving Twilight an appraising look, and settle it right now. I believe we should treat this like a band-aid, Twilight. Better to rip it off at once than to pull your hairs out one by one. Okay, I can... <sighs> I can do this, Twilight said, shakes making a comeback on her voice and legs. Where is he? Mm, I gotta say, Princess, this ain't my turf, so I might be wrong, but... This doesn't seem to be leading to what I think is Regden's pad. This looks more like... Applejack trailed off, hoof waving towards the door in front of them. They had been led towards one of the castle's towers and made their way up, almost to the very top. The last staircase left them standing in front of a pair of intimidating doors. Rarity was surprised by the lack of guards and ponies. 
The closer they got to their destination, the less ponies that seemed to wander around with almost complete absence of life in and around the tower. The doors were made of an ebony material, thick and so dark it seemed to suck the light around it. A full moon, split in half by the seam of the doors, was placed high up, made of cloudy silver. Piercing silver stars were placed around the door, in a seeming random pattern, hold in deep grooves. Streaks of deep dark purple and dark blue seemed to wave in and out of the portrayed night sky. Unless this was an extravagant entrance to Equestria's most sinister observatory, there was only one pony that could be making her home in the chambers beyond. Considering that this was their first impression they had of Princess Luna after her short stay at Ponyville, they really couldn't be blamed if the title Nightmare Moon was expressing itself in their heads with loud screams, could they? Poor Fluttershy was staring at the moon high above, her jaw wide open. Birdie noticed Rainbow Dash circumpendently put a hoof under it and closed her mouth. Rakedin has been spending the majority of his time with Luna, Susty informed them. He has been paying back Twilight's kind help in learning equestrian by aiding in Luna's updating her vocabulary. He has also been assisting her with her studies to familiarize herself with modern culture. She pouted a bit. <laughs> and although I am uncertain of the wisdom of that particular choice, they have both been very scholastic at studying a variety of surprising subjects. She stepped forwards, her long horn lit as it opened the massive doors. He also seems to have recruited my sister for some of his projects. She smiled knowingly at Twilight. Speaking of which, the first magic deep microscope is being constructed at Canterlot University, right now. We have expect to have the first detailed image of a cell by next month. Whatever a cell was, it was the most proper thing to say to Twilight at that moment. It allowed her to make it through the door, lost in a trance, daydreaming about Celestia's words, eyes filled with wonder and her lips locked in an adorable O oh, position. The foyer they came in was a surprise. Birdie would have expected dark coloring, casting the room in simulated darkness. What she saw instead was pleasant, earthy colors, punctuated by a streak of dark blue or rarely purple. The furniture was robust, thick, and rich, unlike the dainty creations that she had seen in the rest of the castle, making the setting appear strangely homely. The light was dim, thick dark curtains drawn over the windows, but this only intensified the warm closeness. A thick dark blue carpet dominated the floor. At the end of the room, a double staircase made of dark wood led to the floor above. Among the twin stairwells was a wide balcony, its doors left wide open. Celestia approached one door at the end of the room, eyeing it critically before pressing her ear against it and chuckling at what she heard. <laughs> if past experiences are any guide, I believe we will find our quarry in here. Twilight, are you coming? Twilight had stopped in the middle of the foyer, one roof rubbing the other as she answered. Actually, Princess, I was thinking I should wait here until you let him know why I came. I, uh, I need some more time to prepare myself. She said, convulsively swallowing. Spike was fidgeting next to her, Twilight's tail wrapped around one of his little claws. I'm gonna wait here too, Princess. Giving Dad a warning first might be for the best. Celestia's mouth was set in a straight line. If you believe you need more time to wait, then I won't rush you, Twilight. Celestia looked at the rest of the group around her. You girls better come along. He will be more patient with you next to me. Though one of you might want to stay back with Twilight, she hinted. Fluttershy offered at once, eager to both refrain from this social activity, but mostly because that's who the sweet deer was. She trotted daintily to Twilight's side and put one of her soft wings around her, making her smile in gratitude. Applejack opted to stay behind too, dedicated to being the pillar of strength that Twilight relied on. Right, Celestia said, forcing back the serene smile. In we go. She opened the door and they all walked into the dark room. Rarity, Rainbow Dash, and a skipping Pinkie Pie followed right on her tail. When Rarity got in, she saw that her room was not completely unlit. A small covered lamp was providing a weak source of light, casting the room in a deep semi-darkness. Rarity's eyes adjusted quick enough and recognized the room as a study. The bookshelves covered the wall on the left door, examining the opposite side, explained why there was no light allowed inside. The walls and windows had been covered with large panels made of cork, very much like the smaller ones Rarity herself liked to use in her design room. 
A multitude of papers have been tacked on, brimming with words and hurried sketches of uncomprehending design. There were two desks in the room. One of them, the largest by far, was located near the end of the room, in front of a very large mirror with a glinting gold frame. She saw the shape of another, smaller one in the corner, where the light did not reach. There was no biped being waiting for them here. Rarity re-examined the room, Twilight's general description made her certain that it would be impossible to pass unnoticed. Someone as tall as Celestia would certainly... Rarity saw Princess Celestia staring at the dark corner where the small desk was. Rarity scrutinized it further as her night vision sharpened as she saw a strange silhouette had been slumping over it. She realized that she had been hearing a constant noise ever since they entered, which she could now identify as a drowned snoring. Princess Celestia's magic encompassed the small lantern, removing its cover and increasing its light much further than a light source of that size could offer. Rarity felt her chest seizing at the sight. The sharp intakes of breath next to her let her know that her friends had the same reaction. Only Princess Celestia was unaffected by what she saw. The notorious Rigdon was across them, sitting on a stool and falling across the desk, sleeping on top of his arms. He was wearing only a pair of dark blue trousers, leaving his upper body naked, exposing them to the horrifying view on his back. A countless amount of criss lines were making their way over each other. The skin was coarse, raising angrily in places, only to look painfully dug in in others. There was no part of his back uncovered from the blackened ridges, apart from near his sides, and they all flowed the way down with no stop to them until they were covered by the fabric of his clothing. Rarity forced herself to breathe. Next to her, Rainbow Dash spoke up, her exclamation deafening in the silence that reigned in Rarity's ears. Oh. My. Gosh. The snoring stopped. The mangled spine strained up and head covered with a short black mane rose up. There was a delay of a couple seconds as the figure in them recognized the changes in its environment, and in a sudden movement, it was on its feet turned towards them. There was a nightmare night when Rarity was a little filly that stuck in her memory, haunting her childhood dreams. She had begged and begged her parents to let her walk through a haunted house attraction with her classmates. Her mother denied, but her father gave in to her filly tears and convinced her mother to give her permission too. By the time she reached the exit, Rarity fervently wished she hadn't. In the haunted house, she faced the expected jump scares that she loved to scream loudly at. Spiders, snakes, red-colored water running from the walls, ghosts jumping from the corner. But near the exit, they saw the nightmare attraction. Instead of the customary nightmare moon actor jumping and snarling at the guests, the owner had a fielded a view of one of Nightmare Moon's prisoners. A stallion was thrashing on the table, covered with bloody lines hooks and chains positioned around him. The sight of some pony in such pain with promises of worse to come had marked her young self. She had nightmares of what happened to that stallion as they left him behind for weeks, and what they saw wasn't an actor, but a pony who really was there for Nightmare Moon's amusement. When she saw Regden in full light, his mane unkempt and wild from his sleep, Rarity thought for the first time in her life that her imagination had probably been too small. His back had been a horror. She couldn't think of something worse to happen to some pony. But Twilight's former guard offered an answer to that. His torso and arms were a canvas where torment and pain had been given free reign with their tools of art. Straight and jagged scar lines of various sizes were spread all over. Physical memories of deep, brutal lacerations, puck marks of various sizes, clouded any free space among them. Rarity was no doctor, but with her eyes sharpened by a life of attention to details, she saw the small white marks that trailed along a number of the scars, stitching marks, some expertly made with equal distance between each, most crude, repeating themselves next to each other in awkward lines. Others she thought must have been originated by claws and teeth, their symmetry and positioning betraying them. While bile coming up to her throat, she figured that at some point he had almost been bitten in half by something extremely large. His left forearm shined in the light, discolored against the rest of him. 
Other random areas also glistened alike, proof of burns that had covered him at various points in his life. At his chest, she noticed two circular scars, one larger than the other, that were more recent, covering the older ones below. From Twilight's story, she recognized one of them as a place where the full napper managed to stab him. The thought of some pony gored like that made her sick. Not even his face was left unmarred. Something had clawed him at the jaw, reaching down to his throat. Another stab scar was on his left cheek. Tiny white scars were spread around, but went virtually unnoticed, and the casual look by the multitude of much worse. His kind must be bastions of fortitude. Rarity doubted any pony could withstand half of those wounds in its lifetime and survive. Apart from the walking horror he presented, it was like Twilight described. Rigdon's body resembled a minotaur, but his structure was far more aesthetically pleasing to Rarity. Under his naked skin, the shape of his muscles were easy enough to see. He seemed built for strength, far more than speed. His muscles thicker than ropes, and the rough shape of a result gained from the hardship and not the definition of carefully built result of following an exercise regime. He was way less top-heavy, his arms and legs proportioned much better. His balance was obviously much better, as well, exemplified from the easy way he stood straight, unlike the minotaurs who had to carefully measure every hoof step unless they wanted to end up flat on their noses because of the small contact surface allowed on them by hooves. She broke away her gaze from the ghastly scars, Rigdon had only flickered his eyes at Rarity and her friends in the room for an instant before glaring at Celestia. His lips opened through his gritted teeth. Rarity noticed how perfectly capable of cutting they were. He addressed the princess with contempt dripping on every syllable. What the fucking hell are you doing here, Celestia? Rarity wondered to herself if she mentioned to anyone yet how much she didn't like the day's direction. She wasn't so hot on how she kept being ignored, either. The princess started to say, Rigdon, I would like to introduce you to- I don't fucking care who they are. Get them out of here before I do, he interrupted. The princess continued as if he didn't interrupt her. Rarity, bearer of the element of generosity. Rainbow Dash, bearer of the element of loyalty. And Pinkie Pie, bearer of the element of laughter. Pinkie Pie waved wildly with a toothy smile. Rigdon frowned and took his time scrutinizing them. When he turned his attention to her, something in rarity, something old buried instinct whispered urgently. Predator, do not move, do not breathe, get ready to run. Predator, don't move. Predator, don't breathe. Predator, predator, predator. He turned back to Celestia and the moment of hide or flight passed. I see. Princess Celestia sighed. <sighs> Rigdon, this is not what you think. We are here to... Rigdon interrupted her again, hissing. <sighs> These are her friends. These are the mares you send with her. You expect to change my mind by having them speak for you. Rigdon, if you calm down and listen- No! He roared. This time you fucking listen to me. Discord was the final straw. This will not happen again. I will not let it happen again. You sent them against a dragon and then a damned god. Your first response was to throw my girl at their jaws. Is this what you brought them to Canterlot for? To get them equipped and send them off? Well, this isn't happening this time. If it means shattering your precious elements with my own hands, then I will do... Get the hell away from there! Rarity watched in terror as Rigdon charged forward. Pinkie Pie, in her usual manner, had been prodding and examining every part of the room. When she got near the extremely large mirror, Rigdon exploded in action, pulling Pinkie up by her mane and then holding her by the throat against the wall. Celestia was yelling to put her down, but Rainbow Dash in her usual manner took action instead. She launched into the air and with a single beat of her cyan wings, she reached Rigdon and kicked at his head. Rigdon's head launched back, blood spurting and away from his nose. But before Rainbow Dash could taunt him, again, her usual manner, Rarity is familiar enough with her M.O., 
Rigdon's other hand launched forward. His fingers snaked around Rainbow's throat, and before she could react, he thrust her against the wall next to Pinkie Pie. Rainbow tried to force him to let her go by hitting as much of his arm as she could reach with her front hooves. Rigdon ignored her attempts to hurt him, glaring and growling her to submission. Rarity saw Celestia's muscles flexing, ready to charge forward herself, when Pinkie Pie's innocent laughter tickled in the room. <laughs> You're so much faster than you look, Mr. Twilight's dad. I was just standing there when suddenly, whoosh, it felt like my little stomach had to rush after me. She lost a bit of her white smile and got an apologetic but smiling look. I'm sorry for touching your stuff. I was just looking at the pretty mare. I wouldn't break it, honest. Rigdon looked at her slack-jawed. Well, Rarity thought, par for the course. Pinkie Pie gets nailed on the wall by one of the most terrifying creatures they ever saw when they knew who has killed ponies before, mind you. And what does she do? Smile at it, apologize, and break its brain. Uh, do you understand that I can hurt you really badly? He asked, like directing the question at a very young filly. Nah, Pinky said, dismissing the idea with her hoof as if it was impossible. You wouldn't do that to Twilight's friends. I mean, Dashie kicked you really hard. You were bleeding, by the way. I think I got a band-aid. It has giraffes on it, and you're holding her carefully up so she doesn't choke. Rainbow stopped struggling and looked downward at her throat. She spread her hooves and stopped moving her wings, testing Pinky's claim. Rarity had to admit, she seemed to be breathing just fine, and be in no pain at all. Huh. Can you let us go now, pretty please? Or hold me upside down? It's fun when the blood rushes to my head and I get to see all the colors weird, and everything starts moving too fast. It's like you've been to the sea. Have you ridden a ship before? I haven't, but I rode a boat once gently down the stream and I started singing. I don't remember the song, but it was a little lamb, and it was so adorable. Rigdon set them both down gently. Rainbow briefly checked herself and pulled the still bumbling Pinkie Pie with her. Back to Celestia's side. Rigdon was immobile, staring at the wall. Celestia nudged Rarity with her wing, and when she got her attention, she nodded towards the motionless figure. Rarity understood her meaning. If Princess Celestia spoke to him again, he might set him off, but there was a good chance that he might listen to Rarity. With courage she didn't know she had, and wondered who was responsible for it, she really didn't want to do this. She walked to Rigdon's side. The huge person had once killed a pony with his teeth, and had her friends pinned just seconds ago. What? What a great idea. Mr. Regden, she bit his attention. My name is Rarity. I am one of Twilight's friends. I know who you are. He seemed to be dazed or lost in thought. Rarity wondered if this was his way of regretting his actions. I have read your letters to Celestia. You are, uh, you are good friends to her and Spike. She blushed. Thank you, sir. We are not here. He interrupted her with a motion of his hand. No, sir. Or just mister. Just Rigdon, please. Always Rigdon. Rigdon, then. Rarity was feeling a bit sorry for him. She saw what Twilight and Spike meant when they said he was cruel, but kind too. His whole demeanor had changed. His voice had softened, and his movements were slower and calm. We are not here for element business of any kind. We are just escorting Twilight and Spike, as good friends are one to do. He straightened up, visibly nervous. Uh, escorting Twilight and Spike? They came here with you. Rarity nodded. Where? Where are they? Why are they here? Twilight spoke up from the door. Me are right here. I... Wanted to say I'm sorry, Dad. Forgive me. Please. It was as if all of them, but Rigdon had turned the statues, able to watch but not intervene. He looked straight at Twilight and Spike, the little dragon standing timidly next to the unicorn. Rarity saw, as in slow motion with every movement enunciated, Rigdon's throat convulsing violently. At his sides, his hands were turned to fists, shaking. His eyes were wide and his face had blanched. Twilight, Twilight was at least as bad. Her mane had lost its lovely cohesion as it always did in moments where she was greatly stressed. She had sat on the floor, judging from the tremors spreading through her, she didn't trust her ability to stand. 
Her stance was pleading, begging for an answer to her request. Seconds passed with no word uttered. Rarity felt cracks spreading across her heart and tears welling in her eyes. This was going to end horribly. She knew, knew that Rigdon would keep his silence. Twilight and Spike would feel completely rejected and run off. They would run after them, finding them hours later holed in a deserted room, crying their eyes out. And for the rest of their lives, a small part of them would remain shattered, never able to be fixed again, no matter how much Rarity and the rest of the girls tried. I'm... This was a mistake. I don't know what I was thinking. I'll... I'll leave. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. She sobbed and turned to leave with Spike. Regden was still motionless at Rarity's side. Oh, darling, don't go. Keep trying. Don't give up. He obviously still cares. Just try again. Rarity begged in her mind, too absorbed in the tragedy of the moment to speak, to attempt to make a difference to the cruel destiny that was shaping in front of her. Pinkie Pie, may all the stars shine on her for the rest of her life, did not believe in inaction when one of her friends was sad. Without anyone's notice, she had moved behind Regden, rose up on her hind legs, and with all her earth pretty strength, she pushed forward yelling. Go and give them a hug now, you silly Billy. Pinky's laughing voice broke the inertia that had claimed them. More importantly, it broke Regden from his passivity. With huge strides, he ran by Celestia that was standing between him and his target. Twilight and Spike had run back at Pinky's shout, and were in perfect position for Raiden to pull them in his brace as he fell down on his knees. <sighs> My little ones, he whispered fervently, crating them in his arms. <sighs> I missed you. I missed you so much. Well, there it goes. Rarity's heart finally gave up and she ceased wrestling control of her tear ducts. Twilight and Spike, side by side, hugged them back with all their strength. Spike's little sharp claws leaving small scratches and thin lines of blood as they pierced Regden's unprotected skin. They were crying too. But unlike what she feared before, these were caused by happiness. Both sides were whispering to each other as if afraid a louder voice would burst and ruin the reuni reunion trading declarations of love and assurances with each other. Every pony had wit trails running down their faces. Celestia, Pinky, even Rainbow Dash. Rarity gave a fledgling thought of her mascara state before dismissing it outright. She could replace it in seconds. Afterwards, this was a moment of joy for her friends that she was going to treasure forever, and she wasn't going to taint it with shallow notions. <sighs> what, uh... What are you doing, small pink? Rigdon butchered Pinky's name as he stared incredulously at the earth pony that had fastened herself to their side, spreading her hooves as much as she could to hold on to all of them. I want a hug too. I love group hugs. Pinky answered him, nuzzling at his shoulder. Rigdon's barking laughter filled the room, and he pulled Pinky into the space of his wide arms. A voice touched with anger broke in. My chambers seem to be popular today. May I ask what is going on here? Luna was apprehensive at best when they first explained the reason for their presence in her rooms. It was only when it made it clear to her that her two-legged companion was thrilled with the outcome that she stopped looming threateningly over them. Seeing Regan's face covered with blood from Rainbow's unfortunate rush to violence, would have ended with them receiving the similar treatment of the same caliber at least, if it wasn't for Celestia beseeching her sister to calm down. The Night Princess has radically different from the pony they last saw. Her coat was darker, and her mane and tail were flowing in gentle waves, stars swimming among the strands. Rarity had to concede that Luna's mane was magnitudes of order more divine, even that of Celestia's. She had grown much taller too, standing over Rarity's height by more than a head, but still not as tall as Celestia or Rigdon. Rarity wondered if she would one day come to be more like her nightmare moon form again. She desperately hoped not. Luna was currently sharing a couch with Rigdon and his playmates, though she was sitting apart a bit, displaying some wariness and approaching some pony too close. Rigdon sat on the other end of the couch, his head rotated upwards with Spike attending his bleeding, using his small hands to pinch the nose on one point and wiping off the blood from his father's face with a wet cloth. Fluttershy directing him as she hovered above. 
Band-aids, decorated with giraffes, had been layered on his nose and the small scratches Spike accidentally gave him, courtesy of Pinkie Pie. At his size, Twilight was snuggling against him, one of his hands gently scratching her, moving from her ears to her back. The years of experience had apparently taught him all the right spots to treat, because Twilight hadn't stopped purring since she started, to Rainbow Dash's chagrin. His other hand was busy holding Pinkie Pie upside down from her leg. Pinky cooed with wonder, her head getting redder by the minute as she gently swung her back and forth. After the confrontation with Angry Luna, that had been raised from her bed by yelling, interactions went surprisingly smooth with one large exception. When spirits calmed down, Sussie decided to repeat introductions, forcing a new start. Reagan was very courteous with Rarity about asking her line of work and mentioning how he would like to have something made from her since apparently he normally completely covered most of his body with clothes, current showing notwithstanding. Rarity's muse went ablaze and she made a mental note to take his measurements before leaving. He also, inconspicuously, bent near her and, unheard from others, thanked her for her gentleness and generosity with Spike. Applejack asked what the blush was about, but Rarity brushed her off with a later. Rainbow Dash was next in line. She tried to sheepishly apologize for hurting him, but he was cut off by Reagan's exclamation of admiration for a solid head. <laughs> Next time, though, you want to follow up. Either keep going or back off. He advised her in a good nature. Rainbow popped with pride at the intimidating stallion's words. Rainbow assured him that this was the least she could do for her friends in Twilight, gaining a wide grin from Rigdon. It was Twilight's turn to blush next to him. On her turn, Pinkie launched herself with a jump at him, yelling loudly, Hi, I'm Pinkie Pie. He caught her midair and proceeded to throw her up, almost all the way up to the ceiling, again and again, Pinkie cheering loudly as he laughed. When he put her down to Pinkie's express disappointment, he knelt in front of Fluttershy. Fluttershy, unlike what Rarity expected, did not be appear to be frightened of him. Instead, she looked at him with an expression of concern and pity. When Regan got low enough, she surprised all of them by hugging him. Rarity was close enough to make out her whisper. Thank you for saving my friend when she was little. Regan patted her back, and they stood apart, saying nothing more to each other, just smiling and shared understanding. And then Applejack stepped forward, crying out, Howdy! to him, and her patented greeting and Tartarus broke loose. As soon as Applejack stepped clearly into view, Regden, well, there's no other way word to describe it, really, screamed. He tried to step away from the perplexed Applejack, only to trip and fall on his back. Back. He didn't stop trying to move away from her, frantically kicking at the floor and dragging himself in a panic. He twisted around and rushed for the door when Celestia fell on him. Regden tried to force her off, but Celestia was stepping on the middle of the back, and he couldn't get a decent grip. He kept kicking at her legs blindly, but the princess easily avoided the aimless strikes. She bent her neck and spoke to him in a calm, even tone. Regden, this is Applejack from Ponyville. She runs Sweet Apple Anchors near the Everfree Forest. She's just a little older than Twilight and one of her friends. Regden, calm down and think. For some reason, this seemed to work. He stopped moving, and Celestia moved away from him, letting him regain his breath before standing up. Now that was curious. What would he find so terrifying in Applejack of all ponies to make him act like that? She looked at Applejack, like she always did. Her old act covered her head, her mane was her usual ponytail, and her coat was unblemished. She had a small pair of saddlebags on her, but Rarity doubted that that's what set Rigdon off. She had a similar set on her, the one stitched by yours truly. With feigned calmness, he walked back to Applejack and traded pleasantries with her. He systematically refused to answer why he reacted like that both the Applejack and Twilight, and then Twilight silently directed her question towards the Sun Princess. Celestia shook her head in the negative, her mouth forming a stern, straight line. The introductions to Princess Luna were uneventful, at least. The Princess of the Night accepted their bowing with good grace, thanked for the cleansing her from her corruption, and asked them, really asked them, to call her Luna in private. The only detail that spoiled it for Rarity was the way Regden was looking at Luna when she referred to her time as Nightmare Moon. She wondered if he was harboring some disgruntlement for attacking Twilight at the time, but he seemed to be leaning towards worry rather than anger. Are you going to stay for a while, little ones? Regden asked as he was now rubbing and scratching at a content dragon and a half-asleep Twilight. 
Behind the counter, dazed Pinkie Pie was stumbling back and forth, looking around her in wonder. Mm, yeah, Twilight mumbled. Princess Celestia invited us to watch the Royal Guard Tournament. Are you going to come with us? He chuckled. <laughs> Luna and I have made plans to be there. This might turn out to be more fun than I expected. What do you mean by that, Dad? Asked Spike. Never mind that, little flame. You will see tomorrow. It is going to be a surprise. Twilight's mouth was pouting. <laughs> I don't like surprises. Can't you tell us now? He gently patted her cheek with his fingers. <laughs> no, be patient. I don't want to be patient. I want to be up an all-night wonder... Twilight opened her eyes and froze mid sentence. Rigdon, your... your hand! Your finger! Rarity shifted her attention to Rigdon's finger. She had missed it somehow, but where his right hand had five fingers, the left one was missing the smaller one. It seemed to have been chopped off, unevenly and badly cut. No, oh, this old thing? He said nonchalantly. It's not really that important. I got spares. Don't worry about it, little one. Don't worry about it. Twilight was furious at the casualness he exhibited. It's your finger. What happened to it? I traded it. Traded it? She cried out. Traded it for what? He didn't answer. Instead, he leaned his head back on the couch and closed his eyes, hands still working on his charges. Twilight turned to Princess Celestia. Princess, what happened? Celestia sighed. It seemed to have become a common trend for her where Regden was involved. I do not know, Twilight. One day it was just gone. He refuses to say how. Pinkie Pie took his hand in her hooves and carefully examined it. Did a nasty mosquito bite you and you scratched it so hard it fell off? <laughs> a perfectly good explanation, he encouraged Pinkie. I'll go with that one. Twilight evidently gave up on him giving an honest answer and settled back to being scratched again. Rarity decided to try to draw their current hostess into conversation. So, Princess Luna, excuse me, I meant Luna. Your sister let slip that you and Regden were working together on some kind of project. More than one, actually, Luna answered excited. I do not wish to spoil the surprise either, but we are working on wonderful ideas that will change our world forever. Does this have to do with the knowledge Regden has, like Twilight informed us? She inquired. Almost exclusively, Luna nodded. We have been taking detailed notes of everything he can remember from his kind's technology and scientific progress, and slowly figuring out their magical equivalents. It's a slow process as we are working with bits and pieces, some terms we simply have no translation for, and have no idea what Regden remembers correctly, or is just wrong about, but- Wait, Twilight interrupted, standing ramrod straight. You've been taking notes of everything? All that Regden knows? Well, yes, Luna answered her. We are trying to be organized about it. That room Dad was sleeping in, all those papers on the walls and desks, were they, th were they them? Rarity had a vision of the future. It involved a unicorn leaving the room in a mad dash for knowledge. Twilight, darling, she started. She didn't manage to finish before Luna answered Twilight. Yes, most of them. Rigdon saw what was coming too late, but she still attempted to grab for Twilight. Twilight, however, seemed to be more worked up than they thought. Instead of running off to the study, she was simply gone in the magic explosion of a teleportation. Rigden lost no time and ran out, shouting, Twilight, come back here! In the next few minutes proved to be very entertaining for those who decided to stay behind, which meant to every pony else. Rigden and Twilight's voices were easily carried over them as they shouted at each other. Twilight, you are not allowed to see the mess with these... These are all written in gibberish. I can't read these. She yelled in anguish. I am not an idiot to write it down in equestrian. These are all my written in my language. Now drop them. No. If I have to translate them to read them, then I will. I am the smartest unicorn around. This won't stop me. Twilight, I know three different languages of my kind. You won't make a dent in these no matter how hard you try. Wait. Your people are multilingual race? How does that work? Is it geographical reason? Or did you segregate your languages based on social standards? Or... Put those papers down, and I will tell you all about it. How about that? 
No, these are mine now. I deserve them. You never told me anything. I need to know. Don't make me be violent, Twilight. Either drop it all, or I will punish you. Ha! <laughs> Twilight scoffed loudly. You've never laid a finger on me in your life, and you're not gonna start now. I swear I will torch every single one of them. No! Twilight screamed in pure terror. Don't hurt my babies! Just let them go before they rip. I have reasons I don't want you to... Buck you, you old. Twilight said the same harsh alien word that Celestia had used before. Rainbow Dash shook her head. Oh, Twilight, you never ever call your parents that. You're bucked now. Twilight obviously agreed if her loud eep was any indication. Regan's voice rose to new heights, sounding as if he was standing right next to her ear. What did you just say, young lady? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Celestia, get the sink full and find me a bar of soap. Now! No! I'll be good! I'll be good! Stop, stop, stop! Get down from my back and face your punishment like a grown mare, Twilight, before I... There was a silence after he stopped. Every pony held their breath. Rarity wondered if he finally killed Twilight by accident. He sounded angry enough for that. Little one? They heard him say, his voice strangely passive. Did you just... pee on me? Every pony started snickering. I... I had a lot of tea, and you squeezed too hard. Never before had Rarity thought she would see two princesses rolling on the floor, trying to stop their laughter long enough to gulp down some precious air. She would have to appreciate the sight more if she wasn't in the same state, along with every pony else. Luna was the first to manage to regain enough self-control to get up. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll go fill up the bathtub, she said, causing every pony to suffer through more seizing laughters. Outside the room, Twilight and Regden were dripping and waiting for them to calm down so that they could go wash up. There we go. What a wholesome end to this chapter. I've been meaning to get to it. It's just chap this chapter was really long. This chapter was really long. The next chapter shouldn't be coming out in such a long time frame. And also, I'm using a new audio software. And I finally decided to upgrade to Adobe Audition. And I hope this sounds better. I'm using a lot more different tech to just try to make sure my stuff comes out alright without too much background noise, which was the limitation of my previous software. Anyways, I'd like to thank my Patreons first. Thank you, Chase Lee Master and Texture. I really do appreciate you supporting my channel. If you guys want to check out my Discord, that'll be linked down below. My Patreon for saucy content if you're interested. And this has been Firehearth. Have a wonderful day.